Zero to Geek. Learning better is better. And welcome, geeks, to our fifth chapter of uh, of my book that I wrote, Ben Valla, but that's my name. The name of my book is HTML Graphing and Data Visualization Cookbook. What a perfect and nice name. Anyway, so um, what are we gonna? What are we doing in chapter five now? If you're new to us and you don't really know what we're doing, this is our Wednesday date, and in our Wednesday date, we are talking about books and analyzing chapters of books to help you while you're reading to get a grasp of what it's about, or even before you've read the book to try to get a feel of what you're actually going to learn in that book. Beyond that, tips, tricks, and other things that we think or I think that are important for you to know about as you're learning and progressing in that book. So let's jump right in, see what are the topics, and run through them really quickly, see what, what we have to say about it, and then, well, part our ways until next Wednesday, right? So let's go for it. So first of all, let's just go through the chapters really quickly, or the recipes really quickly inside of this chapter. What are you going to actually do in this recipes? So in these recipes, we're going to be creating a couple of things. The first thing is we're going to go through a funnel. Well, basically, we're going to create a funnel which is kind of cool. We're going to make a line chart and make it interactive. Although before in previous chapter, we, I think it was chapter three, we created the line chart. We're now going to make it interactive. And really the goal of it is just to show how you could dynamically change the content. Um, moving on after that, we're going to move on to the tree mapping and recursiveness. And we're going to look at a tree map and then see how could we basically create something, a tree map basically, in a recursive way. We'll see what recursive is. So we're kind of learning also kind of core programming skills as we're getting along with the chapters. And five, chapter five is really the, the top of the hill where, uh, let's talk about that one once we complete walking through the, the things that we'll create. Now, um, our fourth recipe is gonna be adding user interaction into a tree map. And really it's just about adding a little bit more interaction to show the user interaction itself. And, Finally, with a real user interactive uh, chart, we're going to take one of our older char charts and add into it some level of interactiveness just for the sake of, of showing how you integrate interactiveness into Canvas because Canvas on its own is not interactive. So the chapter five is really just like wrapping up all the stuff that we really need to talk about for you to be able to build charts in a convenient way, going through a couple of loose ends charts that we felt like it'll be a good idea to add them in somewhere um, through talking about interactiveness, recursiveness, user interaction, clicking of the mouse, and really the most important things in any any interaction you would want inside of uh, a chart. So let's see what that uh, all of that means. By the end of this lesson, you should have be really, really comfortable already with Canvas from earlier chapters, really comfortable with creating charts, and by the end of chapter five, you should be also comfortable with adding user interaction and adding more sophisticated ways of dealing with information or more dynamic ways, I would say, of dealing with information. So let's just go right in there and just see a couple of the samples that you are going to be working on. And again, if you want to find our books homepage, it's on 0 dcom Just click onto our book section, find the book HTML5 Graphics or Graphing and Data Visualization Cookbook, uh, probably going to be Graphing. Uh, and if you're looking for the source files, you will always find them on the bottom of the page and probably somewhere on the top in the future, but right now it's only on the bottom and that's it so let's see the sample so first of all we have the bub well again bubble chart it's like ignore the titles i always forget to update them so we can see here the the pyramid or the funnel they were talking about where as you go higher there's more information inside or it, it, it it's a really cool chart and a very very nice way to visualize changes between things especially when there's a relationship between between those things so in this chart we kind of created a fake kind of like um survey to see how many people actually reach the end of chapter five where in the beginning chapter one a lot of people and then two it's a little bit less and a little bit less and a little bit less until there's almost no one left and at five they leave us because we're in chapter five well they didn't leave us but there's no room for other chapters right or everyone that's going to be here is going to read all the rest until then that would be really nice all right so let's see uh, another one of those so the line chart we add i added in a couple of interactions of showing how could you actually dynamically change and switch the chart and also remove add and do whatever you want with it it's a really cool functionality although basic visually it, it teaches you a lot of important ways of how to deal with interactives inside of canvas and how to change dynamically things in canvas because canvas doesn't have any objects inside of it and that's something you'll already know or you already know if you're in chapter five um and that's a cool example that's going to show you uh add some interaction that's not user 
clicking interaction, but some interaction that shows how you could update data dynamically based on whatever parameters that are changing in your application. We'll then create a tree chart and, well, that tree chart is over with already, I believe, and yeah, yeah, we still want that. All right, so the tree chart, which will basically will create a tree chart that builds itself dynamically. So we're recursively based, this is from an XML file, recursively we're going to go in and continue building and continue building until there's nothing more to build. So we'll see how that works. If you've never worked with recursive functions before, I strongly recommend you on you checking that recipe because it's a really important functionality in, po in coding in general and it becomes really, really useful in graphics and data visualization in general. Now, our last map that we can create is a little silly one just to show you user interaction. So this one is basically when I click along somewhere, then it's just going to create charts. Basically, it's going to create clicks to try to see how fast could I click. It's not really a smart idea, but really the idea itself is very simple to try and help our users to see how to add user interaction even on a map before we start putting in real full fledgedly build applications, which we will do that in future chapters. Um, it's a very interesting chapter. It's a very interesting recipe. And I think like this chapter is really the glue that ties our first half of the book where it was about all about us alone. Excellent. I love when cars beep when I'm recording. Um, I hate it. That was a lot. You saw how good I was that, wasn't that? So yeah, so basically, um, the first five chapters you could say are the really most critical chapters of getting you ready in the programming world of graphing and data visualization in general, where chapter six and onwards explores deeper into deeper waters, which are really interesting. So can't wait for next Wednesday. Well, could you? So let's um, talk about what should you do. Really what you should do, the best exercise you should do is pick any, any rest, anything you created already in chapter three or four and revisit it and add all these functionalities that we're adding. If it's click, if it's dynamically changing things, if it's loading it from an XML, if it's finding ways to do logic that is recursive. So try to find one recipe, one, one recipe, one chart, and pimp it out, as the kids would say, I think, if, they, if it was 1995. But it's not. All right, so that's about it. So. Thanks again for watching, and I hope you join me next Wednesday, and I even more so hope that you'll subscribe to us, and I even more so hope that you bought the book or are buying it or you're sending it a gift to your mom and your pet and whoever else you love and getting three copies because you don't want it to get lost because, you know, you want one at home and one on the bus or car and one at work, which is completely rational, and I encourage you to do that. Um, yep, that's about it. So thanks again for watching and I hope you will join us on Wednesday. Oh, and by the way, don't forget to check our zero to geek.com as well. If you're looking for our over 110 hours of content and growing, um, and live support and so many other features for a really, really low membership cost. So check it out if you're interested or just join us on YouTube and continue getting some free, really cool, groovy, awesome videos. Please subscribe to us, we love you so much Please subscribe to us The subscribe button is in the top left corner Top left corner Zero to be Learning better is better